You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Monday, September 30th. Evangelicals for Harris has launched a $1 million ad campaign targeting former President Donald Trump using footage of the late Billy Graham. The ad features Graham's sermon from 2 Timothy 3, warning of evildoers in the last days, and juxtaposes Trump's statements, implying he embodies these traits. Clips include Trump's remarks about greed, abusive comments towards women, and his claim of being the chosen one. Franklin Graham, Billy's son and Trump supporter, criticized the campaign, claiming it misrepresents his father's views. Meanwhile, Jerusha DeFord, Billy Graham's niece, supports Kamala Harris, arguing against Trump's influence on Christianity. The campaign marks a contentious use of religious imagery in political arenas. Former President Donald Trump is set to return to Butler, Pennsylvania for a rally on October 5th, marking his first visit since surviving an assassination attempt at the same location on July 13. During that rally, Trump was shot in the ear by 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks, who was subsequently killed by a Secret Service sniper. Butler County DA Richard Goldinger confirmed the attempted assassin injured Trump, killed Cory Comparatore, and wounded two others. Trump's campaign stated, quote, his return will be a tribute to the American spirit. Trump plans to honor the victims, express gratitude to law enforcement, and thank the community. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro condemned the attack, stating, quote, violence targeted at any political leader is absolutely unacceptable. In a fiery interview on Piers Morgan Uncensored, which aired September 19, psychologist Jordan Peterson branded doctors performing gender transition procedures on minors as butchering sadists, and called for their prosecution on charges of crimes against humanity. Peterson, professor emeritus at the University of Toronto, drew parallels between these procedures and notorious medical experiments from World War II, asserting, quote, it's absolutely 100% unforgivable. His comments were partly in response to Elon Musk's claim that his son was, quote, killed by the woke mind virus after being urged to accept his child's trans identity by medical professionals. Peterson vehemently challenged the suicide prevention rationale for such treatments, labeling it an absolutely bloody lie. His critique comes amid increasing scrutiny and legal restrictions on gender transition procedures for minors, with 26 U.S. states implementing bans. Parents, students, and faculty at the University School of Nashville are calling for accountability following the mishandling of sexual misconduct allegations against former English teacher Dean Masulo. Masulo, who led the school's LGBT club, allegedly groomed and sexually harassed students. Over 250 community members have signed a letter threatening to withhold financial support until administrative changes are made. An internal investigation led to Masulo's dismissal, but concerns remain about the school's transparency and possible financial settlement with him. At least 20 faculty members criticized the administration for prioritizing the school's reputation over student safety. They argued that the school's investigation did not align with established guidelines for handling educators' sexual misconduct, urging the board to take decisive action to rebuild trust. In Dallas, Trinity Bible Church is facing challenging times following former Pastor Stephen Lawson's removal due to an alleged inappropriate relationship with a younger woman. Elder Mark Becker addressed the congregation, emphasizing the need to move forward together despite the difficult week they've experienced. Becker reiterated the church's founding principles, stressing the importance of faithfully preaching God's word, practicing church discipline, and focusing on Jesus Christ as the head of the church. He urged members not to attend church just for any one man's preaching, but to look to Christ. This incident comes in a turbulent year for pastors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, marked by multiple resignations over misconduct, including Tony Evans and Robert Morris. Planned Parenthood's sexual education curriculum for children under 10 has ignited controversy for describing commercial sex work as an interpersonal relationship and advocating abortion as a human right. Highlighted by pro-life group American Life League, the International Planned Parenthood Federation's toolkit also criticizes teaching abstinence until marriage as unfair and unrealistic. Katie Brown, American Life League's national director, accused Planned Parenthood of promoting sexual promiscuity to boost future demand for abortions and birth control, labeling it a misuse of taxpayer dollars. Pro-life advocate Michelle Hendrickson urged parents to attend school board meetings and oppose such curricula. Planned Parenthood did not comment on the backlash, but the debate underscores the ongoing conflict over sex education in American schools. 
A major controversy has erupted at Morningstar Ministries in Fort Mill, South Carolina, involving over 100 former members and affiliates who have signed a petition demanding an investigation into allegations that the ministry, founded by Rick Joyner, enabled the sexual abuse of multiple minors. The petition, published Monday, asserts a, quote, firm belief that corruption, negligence, and abuse of power have plagued Morningstar for decades. This follows accusations against former volunteer Erickson Douglas Lee for allegedly abusing young boys in the ministry's youth programs. Joyner's team contends they, quote, don't know what more we could have done to prevent the abuse, but the petitioners demand Joyner's resignation and an independent audit condemning his and the board's response as inadequate and morally reprehensible. Response from Morningstar is still pending. Pastor Rick Warren, founder of Saddleback Church, addressed the 4th Lusanne Congress on World Evangelization in Incheon, South Korea, stressing the need for re-evangelizing nominal Christians to fulfill the Great Commission. He stated that Christians often prioritize political clout over spiritual power, hindering true evangelism. Warren underscored unity as a crucial factor, saying, quote, The purpose of unity is for evangelism. He argued that first-century Christians, believing in Jesus' imminent return, acted with urgency, leading to exponential growth. Warren added that Christians must rekindle their urgency and collaboration, warning against hitching their beliefs to political figures. He emphasized following Jesus' model of integrity, humility, and generosity, and focusing on prayer as the source of spiritual power. You can learn more about this story and everything you heard today by clicking the links in the podcast show notes below. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post daily podcast. Daily podcast.